Let's now go back and revisit what is climate change. The first thing that we realize that's significantly different is that we've got almost a watt per square meter of extra energy. And when we think about how that extra energy is distributed around the surface of the Earth, it's not going to be uniform. We're going to have areas where it's higher and areas where it's lower. And so we've got an intensification in a local scale. Now you can see why we're getting these intense thunderstorms, very high winds, big hailstorms, tornadoes. The intensification of the gradients, which cause local weather, are manifesting themselves in these extreme events. The rate of urbanization and the rate at which we are emitting carbon dioxide is very rapid and has not leveled off. And so this means that the atmosphere is in a continuous flux. And that has consequences for what to expect in the future because we're not going to get oscillations and then a new equilibrium because we keep changing the ballpark. And so these oscillations are going to continue until such time as we can level off the carbon dioxide emissions or at least the carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere and the amount of urbanization that we are um, inflicting upon the landscape. What that means in terms of extreme events is a little bit difficult to answer. We certainly expect the intensity and the frequency of occurrence to continue increasing for some time. But danger is, and something that people, especially in the insurance world, I suspect, are very worried about, is that these events are going to become much larger in scale. So we're going to be getting very large disaster areas. And we've seen evidence of this. The fires, for example, earlier in 2020 that took out a lot of southern New South Wales. The millennium drought that covered huge areas of southern New South Wales. There's a pattern here. Um, flooding over large areas. Heat waves. These are all things that we expect to continue to occur with increased frequency and intensity.